Welcome to Basecamp. Rest. Breathe. Pray. Prepare. Go. Have you ever asked? Is there more to life than this? Do you know anyone who's asking, what's the point? Starting on the 28th of June, I was starting a new series of talks on a Sunday morning. Each talk will explore a new topic from a Christian perspective. Starting to unpack the difficult questions and aiming to spark a conversation. If you want to ask any questions, you can text or phone them in during the service. And then after each talk, as part of the service, there's going to be a panel um, who's going to aim to sort of chat through some of the issues raised. And if you've never thought about life's big questions, or if you've struggled with them for years, if you've got no faith or have been a Christian for a long time, or perhaps you've just come to faith, this series is for you. Tell your friends and tell your family. Join us for our live stream services on Sunday mornings at 10.30 on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ghanaian. Good morning. Good morning from Nesbara. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Magic. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to New Life Baptist Church. This is our online streamed worship service and we give you a great welcome. Thank you for joining with us. This morning is going to be slightly different. We're going to be using our base camp format, but we're going to be led by our New Life Ghana team. This church has been uh, involved with Ghana for over 20 years. We have a ministry of serving the church and the community outside of Accra in Ghana. And we believe it's God's calling to us to work there, and we've seen great uh, results for our work over the years. So I hope you'll enjoy the service and engage this morning as we celebrate and recognise what God has done. We'll be hearing from members of the team and from those in Ghana. You'll have seen some of the welcomes already this morning. Jen will be bringing our children's activities towards the end of the service, so look out for that. And now, as we start, we're going to have a short snapshot video of the work in Ghana. Because people gave time and money, a school was built. Diamond Hill School, 350 children aged 2 to 14, opened in 2006. Because we sponsor children, teachers are trained, 100 plus children get an education and a free hot meal at lunchtime with a safe environment. Because we're in it long term, students go to senior high school. Education means employment. Because we built a children's home, children in poverty are looked after. If the rain falls, sometimes it comes out from the roofing. Sometimes some come here. But now when a small took us to this place, we get more attention on school. Prosper came to the home in 2006. 
and he is now a teacher. From nowhere to somewhere. Because we go, teaching skills are shared, new ideas are passed on. We learn how to make a child concentrate. Everything that we just had, it's very good and it's inspiring so much. We've learned a lot. And we have fun. Because we don't give up, the boy finds a vocation. Edward's father was a thief. Because he was very small, he passes through the the window to go and open the main door and they go and rob the person. And I said to myself, if I had a boy or a son who is a bad boy like Edward, would I throw him away? No. He's now a qualified driver, you know, and he's driving a school bus. He's imputing back into the project. Because we go to work, play areas are built. And we're just about to put the basketball net up on the wall of the church for we'll teach children how to play basketball. And new sports are played. Buildings are transformed and fire becomes Diamond Hill School. Because someone listened to God, a remote village gets a church building. And many villagers are blessed. They get health care in church and learn new skills. The villagers told us what they needed, a bread making business. With our help they built a bakery, installed ovens, they taught themselves the skills that they needed and they made bread. This gives themselves an income. We want to thank uh, New Life Banana for what they've done for us. Mm -hmm. Together, we can make a difference. Wheelchairs for the disabled. Solving period poverty. It's nice, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's economical. Even if you don't have money, you can do it yourself and use it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Is making it, it to Ghana. <laughs> Hundreds of health cards have been given out. I fell seriously ill and had to be taken to the hospital. I didn't spend much as I would have without the help of the cat. So I want to say a big thank you to the... Lockdown in Ghana means no money, no money means no food, and literally no daily bread. We have provided vital food for the poorest. Thank you very much for your support. What are you going to use the cake for? To eat. To eat. <laughs> Rest. Jesus said, Come to me, all those who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. I am indebted to Steve for inviting me to participate in this morning service, and I do with a humble heart and with gratitude. And the section he has given me is right at the beginning of our service, an opportunity for us to rest, to reflect, to listen to the word of God in our lives and for our lives. I want to share with you one or two very simple images. The first one is this one of a baby sleeping at rest in the arms of its parents, safe in the knowledge that it is secure, that it is loved. Safe in the arms, the hands of its father. It's very poignant for us today as we remember the secular celebration of Father's Day. Of course, for a Christian, Father's Day has many different and wonderful suggestions of God as father, creator, nurturer. 
this image of being cared for or being nurtured is reflected all around the world and all different continents and all different cultures. We love our children as God loves us. Rest is incredibly important for human beings because we take that opportunity to recharge our batteries. I had the privilege of spending two weeks out of my sabbatical uh, two years ago to travel to Ghana with New Life uh, North Allerton Church and to spend time with Osmond, with Liz and with the people in Accra and the people of Honey. Here is a picture of my daughter Annie with one of the children in the village and here is some children in, uh, in one, of the, uh, one of the villages waving to us and just being thankful that we are there to be with them and to show interest in them. I love children, there's just, uh, there's, an, there's an innocence to them, a pureness to them. We remember the innocence and pureness of children as we call to mind Samuel. Samuel from the Old Testament. Samuel who knew rest, but through his rest was called by God. I take this opportunity to share this short passage with you. As you reflect upon resting in the Lord, and yet hearing his call for you in your lives. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. During this time of rest, let us pray that God will speak to us in our sleeping, in our slumber, in our waking moments. And let us remember that Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. We bow our heads for a moment's prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the God of all creation and you love us all equally as your children. Be with us in our times of rest. Be with us in our times of action. Bless us all wherever we may be in our ministries in our lives as your disciples. And these things we ask and pray through God our Father. Amen. Breathe. Um, last Sunday, I was listening to the service and I realised that I have been trying to create space in my life to worship the way that I used to and um, before I had two little boys. So I thought instead, because God wants us to try and take opportunities to worship in the middle of our messy lives um, and in the middle of, well, other things, other priorities, we still need to be able to turn our attention to him. So we are going to play Joy of the Lord for you this morning. Are you ready? Let's go.
May He open favor over your life that in all that you do, you'll be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And I also want to pray for the world. Father, we pray for the world because we know that the world is sick right now. There are so many things and many uncertainties that are going around. But Father, we pray and we thank you that let your love, let your love upon all over the world, we pray. That um, everything that we hope for, everything that we've prayed for, we pray that may we not be ashamed. And the world will be healed again. And everyone will be happy. Father, we pray for the families that have lost loved ones um, over the COVID-19. Father, we pray that may you uh, comfort them, give them a sense of comfort. Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your name. In Jesus' name I we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you all. We thank love you. you. We appreciate what you do for us. And we thank you. The children in Ghana, all of them say thank you. And bye. To know everyone over there. Uh, we want to thank you for your good work that you are doing for us here. Especially for the school, the church, and individual ones that you always care about their life. We thank you, we bless you and for all these years. You have been helpful to us and this time around too where coronavirus too is around. You never left us but you still continue to support us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I want to thank you all for your gifts, your money and everything. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Rosamond and Osmond for praying for us and for the world. I am Liz Foster and I lead the New Life Ghana team. Let us continue to pray. Father, we thank you for choosing us to join in your ministry in Ghana. Lord, in these unprecedented times, break our hearts for what breaks yours. Open our eyes to the things unseen and show us how to love like you have loved us. We ask you to bless Osmond, Rosemond, Gladstone and all those working with them who devote their lives to supporting those most in need. We ask you to fill them from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet with your Holy Spirit so that they may know your wisdom, compassion and strength. We pray for each sponsored child and for all the children at Diamond Hill School and in the village of Oni, that even though their schools are closed and church services are restricted, that they may still grow in their knowledge of and love for you. Father, we pray all these things in your mighty name. Amen. Prepare. Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34, the greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Hello and good morning. Um, 
when I was asked to do this little message, I was thinking about um, my first match for St. Peter's, which is my new school. Uh, and I, was, I play hockey and I'm a goalkeeper. So uh, when I arrived at the new school, there was an already established keeper that basically had to kick out um, of his position. And um, my coach had given me the opportunity to play the first half of the first match of the season. And then the other keeper would play the second half and whoever played the best would get the position. So I was ready, I knew what the keeper was like, I knew I was better than him, I knew I could get it. So I, got, I stepped onto the pitch full of confidence but also very nervous because it's my first match and I put a lot of pressure on myself to do well. And um, as I uh, was playing I was just so focused on making sure that everything I did was impressive, making sure that every single thing, every movement, everything that I said, every save impressed the people that were watching. And when I stood uh, ready for a short corner right at the start of the match, I was so focused on what the player was going to do and how I could make sure that I made a save and not only made the save, but made it look good. That as soon as I stepped out, ready to make the save, I just watched the ball fly into the back of the net. I could easily have saved it, but I was so focused on impressing everyone that I failed. I did it again later on in the match. Someone was running into the D, went for a back stick, and I knew exactly where it was going. And it went exactly there, but I just didn't move. I was rooted to the spot, so focused on making sure that my save looked good. Was I going on my hand? Was I going on my leg? What was I, how would I make sure that I looked the best? Luckily, at the end of the half, it was 3-3, so uh, we had managed to get back up to the... Um, to level but um, I came off and I'd let myself down and my coach just said to me where were your basics and obviously after that I was thinking why on earth am I thinking back to that um, I was lucky enough that actually uh, the other keeper had a mare and I got the position but um, that's not the point I was wondering why that match was relevant everything went wrong in that match nothing was good about that match for me the only thing that was good was someone else messed up. Um, and, I mean, we lost the match 6-3 in the end, which, if you play hockey, isn't actually that bad. It's a high-scoring match game. But um, I... Um, and so I then thought about... I just asked God, why have you th uh, put that match on my heart? And he said, we make that mistake as Christians. So often, we are so focused on how we're going to impress everyone around us, how we're going to impress the non-believers, the atheists, the other religions, the people in power, how as a body and as a, um, as a church, how are we going to impress those people so that we can be, um, be uh, fishers of men, bring people in by impressing them. And God says, that's not what I asked you to do. Yes, I asked you to go out and be fishers of men. But as we see in this um, passage, it says that the most important commandment is to love. Love with all your heart, all your strength, all your mind. Love your neighbour as yourself. All we need to do is love. That is our basic, our four letter basic. L-O-V-E. Love. He asks us to love completely and wholly, just like Jesus did. God is fully love. He is love. We are a religion of love. Jesus Christ was a physical embodiment of love, coming from heaven to earth, walked our step, felt our pain, was 100% human, yet 100% love. He died on a cross, feeling our agony, dying our death, dying a sinner's death. All because he loved. All because he wanted you to one day say, Jesus Christ, I love you. He looks down on our earth now and he says, I love you. Every time we make a mistake, every time we fall down, he says, I love you. He picks you back up. And as we feel that warm feeling inside, as we feel that love, we so often do when we just allow him to be. A feeling of butterflies in your stomach and shivers down your spine as the Holy Spirit fills you completely and utterly and there is no place you'd rather be. That love is what we long for so hard. As humans, we search so much for love and trying to cram different pieces of the jigsaw into our hearts. 
but we don't realize that it's right in front of us, stood next to us, saying, you can do it. I believe in you. You are mine, my daughter, my son, my child. He is with you 100% of the way, holding your hand in the good times, carrying you through the bad times, laughing when you laugh, crying when you cry. As ambassadors on this earth, just as an embassy is a little piece of a country in another country, churches should be a little piece of heaven on earth. We should be a little piece of Jesus' love walking around the earth, spreading that love everywhere that we go. But are we? Have we failed? Yes. And it might feel harsh to say that we have failed, but God doesn't mind. God goes, doesn't matter. Lift your head up. We can sort this. Our, our church is a place where people think when they're in trouble, I'll go to the church. They will help. Or are they a place where they're so afraid of because they're afraid of being judged? They're afraid that they'll get turned away because of the way that they see Christianity as not a religion of love, but a religion that looks down on people. But that is not what we're meant to be. We are all sinners. We have fallen so far short of the word of God, of the love of God, sorry. The love of God. We have fallen so far short, but as the prodigal son's father ran towards him, Jesus runs towards him. He doesn't allow people to judge him as he runs. In the Middle East, at the time of the prodigal son, for a father to run like that would have been so embarrassing. Yet he ran. Yet Jesus runs. And he holds you. And he protects you. And he carries us home. However, think about how much easier it would have been for the prodigal son if he had someone saying, don't worry, I failed too, let's do it together. Let's walk this road. I know a man who will carry us home. We need to do that too. We need to walk alongside those people who hurt so much because they feel they have failed. But we need to say, so have I. I have failed. But it doesn't matter. He bore our cross, he died, and he is risen. He is alive, his love is alive, the church is alive, the word is alive. Jesus is alive. Is his love alive? The only way that Jesus can be on this earth is through us. We are his hands and his feet. We are his hands and his feet on this earth. And we are the only way that his love can be amplifi amplified. Through the things that we do and the words that we say, we need to amplify his love. Because if we don't, we become that judgmental, scary, snooty religion that no one wants to talk about. And that everyone is too scared to go near because they feel they will be judged. So many people have a misconception of God. They don't have a problem believing that he exists, but believing that he is good. They see the evil in the world and they think that it is God. They see the evil within us and they think if that is God, I don't want it. But we need to say, I'm sorry, I'm broken. But God will make me whole. He will make you whole. He will make us whole. It says in 1 Corinthians, if we speak without love, we are but a noisy gong. If we go around preaching words and saying all these things, but without love, we are just a noisy gong. We need to be careful what we say and what we do, because we don't know who's listening and we don't know who li whose lies we're turning away from Christ. So, the message today is to love like Jesus. First and foremost, forget the rest of it. Forget it all and love. Learn how to love. Look in the Bible. Look where it says how to love. It says in 1 Corinthians 3, I think. I can't remember. can't remember. Hopefully they might 
put a little link there. That'll be helpful. A little passage. Um, uh, and it'll say, and it tells you that love isn't envious. It does not boast. It isn't self-seeking. It's not proud. Always hopes, always protects, always preserves. If we can love like that, then we are on the way to being more Jesus-like. So why is this relevant to Ghana? When I went to Ghana, I um, got a thing called culture shock, which um, is when you go to a poorer country and a country that you're not used to seeing uh, the culture there, um, it can just take you aback and sort of confuse your mind. And because I came, we come from such a busy country, uh, busy society, the Western society, um, I didn't understand what it meant to have nothing, what it meant to be poor. I had no, I was ignorant to the facts of what that meant. And I saw these people walking about as if they had no purpose, walking about selling stuff that never seemed to get sold. They might sell one thing, but that was it all day. And they got no money and that was the only thing their family got to support them on. And I didn't understand how or how it was supposed to work. Yet, as I prayed and as I saw it more, I saw that within their lives, they had something way more special. Through talking to Gideon and Osman and Emmanuel and Edward and Martha and um, all the people at the school and at the church, I learned that they have that love. That love is within them completely and wholly and it overflows through the things that they say, through the things that they do, through the way that they welcomed us into their life, through the way that they worshipped, through the way that they gave, through everything that they did, it emanated God's love. They were beacons of God's love on this earth and we need to learn to be like them. Learn that actually this life is temperamental. We know that so much from what we're going through right now. Everything we thought mattered doesn't matter. Everything that we thought was important is no longer important. The only thing that's important is God. We're living in a tiny fragment of time and we have eternity to deal with. But I want to spend that eternity with God. And the only way to do that is to love like him and to learn to love like him. And as we do that, we will make this world a better place. And that's why, although Ghana was so broken in so many ways, the system and the government and everything, but there was a love and a wholeness there that I have never felt anywhere else. A completeness that I have never known in our world, in our Western society, with all the things that we have. Something I've never felt. I've only felt it there. And it was the true love of Christ lived out through people. Imagine if we could do that too. Imagine how good England would be. How good Europe would be. How good the whole of the world would be if Christians lived out that love fully and completely and wholly. So go out. Love like Jesus as best you can because we will fail. But God will run Pick us up, hold us and say, let's try again. Thank you for listening. I hope that you took away from that something really special about the love of God and about what it means to be a Christian. God bless. Go. So Sam, thanks very much for that talk. That was really inspiring. Um, and we have Lorna with us now, Lorna Mallet, who uh, was on the same trip to Ghana as you were last October. Fellow travellers. So Sam, what 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 was your lasting impression? Having you were obviously really impressed by that trip to Ghana. It had a big impact on you. What's your takeaway? What have you come back to the UK as a lasting impression? Um, well, it's the lasting impression of that love that I experienced while I was out there. Um, and the fact that actually you don't need 
anything special to live that love and express that love. And it was, it's a project and a sort of mission of love um, over everything that goes on in the Ghana project. Yeah, I, I, it sounds like it's going to have a big, a lasting effect on your life, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it will do. And if there are young people watching this uh, service this morning and heard you speak, how would you, um, how would you direct them or advise them to, to, to get this love of God for themselves? Um, I'll just say, look at the word um, of God that he gives us. Um, it's right there. That's where I learned it from. Obviously, I was gifted to have parents who um, live out that love in their life, but um, come down to church, join in with uh, youth things that we have on at church and learn from the leaders and the other young people like myself. Uh, and we will hopefully try and show that love to you. Right. Thanks very much, Sam. Sam, I'm going to pray for you now and then um, you'll be leaving us. Father, I just thank you for Sam right now. Thank you for his inspiring talk. I thank you for the love of God that is so evidently in his life. And I pray that others will turn to Jesus, turn to this love for themselves after hearing Sam this morning. Bless him, we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Sam. Thank you. So, Lorna. Hello. Tell us who you are and how you got involved with You Like Ghana. Okay, as you can probably tell from the background, I am a primary school teacher, reception class, and um, Steve Crocker is my head teacher, and Liz Foster is one of the school governors, and they are both on the Ghana team. So last year I asked if I could join a team, and after a very brief interview, they accepted me onto the team. But Liz did warn me, she said, it's a very Christian team, will that be okay? And at that point I said, yeah, I think so. So that's how I got, got involved. And I, I believe your, your first time at our church was at the service, uh, a Ghana service prior to the trip in October. Uh, not quite the very first time. I did, okay. go, um, I did go on Good Friday as well because I was actually, although I wasn't, I wouldn't have called myself a Christian at the time, I was searching for faith and I wanted to believe. And I came on Good Friday thinking, if I can't find God on Good Friday, when will I? <laughs> I didn't find God on that occasion, but I did, well, I think he nudged me because he put me in the path of Liz and Steve. And I didn't actually know how involved they were with the church at that point. But, but then later on, Liz did invite me to the Harvest Festival, which was a Ghana festival. And, um, and at that service, I mean, it was a very moving service, but the, the prayer team, um, what, somebody had had a vision of somebody panning constantly for gold in a stream, um, and then just putting the pan down, getting up and walking off into the woods. And, and it just spoke to me immediately. I thought, that is me. Um, I've been looking for solid, concrete proof. I wanted God to be undeniable. And, um, and, and that vision just made me realize that actually all I've got to do is just take that step of faith. And so I went forward for prayer. And wow. really from that moment on, I didn't look back. My eyes, I just saw the world through different eyes. My, my heart opened, my mind opened. And you know, all that time that I was looking for God, he was, he was there all along, you know. And I do believe that he's been nudging me like throughout my life and even to the extent of placing me in this school with Steve and Liz. So, so yeah, so from then on and then going in, into Ghana with these, these new eyes that, that could see God. There were so many things about the trip that, that just convinced me as, as a new Christian that God was real, you know. Um, so the first thing was, you know, we, drove, we flew all those thousands of miles to a completely different culture, different geography, different lifestyle, and yet the people were saying the same prayers, singing the same hymns, reading the same psalms, praising the same God. And it just, 
it just blew me away really that there was this huge sense of family and belonging and unity you know like I'd come from you know another part of the world and yet I was so accepted and and welcomed and just like Sam was saying you could just feel the love so so that was one thing and then another thing was I was just blown away by how much has been achieved what you know not to deny the the talents and vision of um Osmond and Rosamond and Gladstone but I just don't think what's been achieved out there could be achieved um, just by human hands you know God is definitely in in the project um, I was so fortunate to be able to work in the school I uh, worked with the children from the home of hope yeah uh, did the church at Oni we visited the church on the hill and listened to Gladstone preaching um, we were privileged to be the first people to sample pasties from the bakery at Oni. All those amazing things going on, just like they just screamed at me, God did this, you know. So your, your trip to Ghana was part of your confirming your faith in, in Christ and Jesus. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah. We, when I went to the church on the hill, um, it was a communion service and, uh, you know, they, there was I, what, a week earlier or two weeks earlier like wanting to believe and then I remember Gladstone at the, at, for the communion he said all you have to do to come forward is believe in Jesus Christ and I was like I believe in Jesus Christ you know there was just no doubt in my mind and so I, I went forward for communion um yeah wow you know? that sounds it sounds uh, sounds so exciting uh, so what, what, what is, I've just asked Sam this question, what's your takeaway, what's your lasting impression of Ghana as you've come back? Um, I think very similar to Sam, I, uh, the word that always comes to me is family, that, do you know, that we're all part of, of God's family, we're all part of, of, of God's vision, like God's kingdom and like I said, even though we were all so different, we, we belonged and meshed together so so well. So that, I think, right. is a lasting impression. Uh, and, and lastly, um, Lorna, how would you say your newfound faith, which is really just six months old or so, maybe a little bit more than that, how is it affecting your life and how do you see it affecting your future life? Um, well, first of all, I think knowing that God wants me because for a while I thought, oh, he doesn't want me, you know, why don't I believe? Um, but he does want me and he's chosen me. And that just gives me such a real sense of peace and comfort and joy. Um, I feel like, yeah, I feel, I just feel a lot more um, complete and at ease really. And I can take things in my stride. Um, I'm sure God's got a purpose for me. I don't know what it is, but it's exciting. Um, yeah, that's great. The, you know what it's going to be where my life's going to go um i'm so keen to get involved in things so yeah i just see what happens and, and, and what would, what would you say uh lorna to anyone watching this now who, who you know there's a lot of people searching at the moment through this uh current crisis and their lives have been shaken and they're panning for gold just like you were uh, yeah. or like that vision was yeah. what would you say to them now what's your advice um, put the pan down and walk into the woods. That's what I would say. Um, uh, I, do you know that um, that you should receive the kingdom of God like a child? Yeah. That, I feel like that's me. I feel like, um, you know, there's Sam all mature and knowing stuff and I know nothing. And um, I just constantly ask questions uh, and I just see... Like I'm looking at the world with wide-eyed wonder or I'm crying, you know, I am like a child now. And um, I just have this thirst to know. So like Sam said as well, reading the Bible, I mean, I'm sort of racing through it. I'll have to do it all again much slower, I think, and in a more considered way. But, I've, you know, I've raced through the Gospels. I've read a bit of the Old Testament. I've read Acts and I'm into the letters. So, um, yeah, just trying to learn. And I've got involved now with a life group as well. And I've got a lovely mentor. Oh, so, that's great. So yeah, just, just get involved. And I would say, give it a try. Give it a try. Come to church. Um, I, I just found that the church is 
is just brilliant. I loved it. I mean, I did spend about the first four months just crying at the back, but um, yeah. Well, thank you for that. That's that. That's fantastic, Lorna. Um, I'll just pray for you now as we, as we close. Father, I thank you for Lorna, for her newfound faith, for her excitement, and I pray that you'll uh, pour into her your Holy Spirit, that she, as she grows as a newborn babe in Christ, she will develop into the woman of God that you've called her to be. Bless her today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lorna. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you to Rosamund and her team in Ghana for that worship. And now we're going to continue to worship by joining together in saying the Lord's Prayer. The words will come on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to go over to Jen for the children's activities. Welcome to Ignite Kids News. In today's headlines, a man is attacked on his way to Jericho. A priest and a Levite, they refuse to help him. A Samaritan stops, helps him and takes him to a nearby hotel. And Jesus tells us we need to love everyone because everyone is our neighbour. With more of this exciting news story, we're going to hand over to Trev, our roving reporter, who was actually with the victim this morning outside the hotel. Over to you, Trev. Well, thank you, Jen. Good morning. I'm here this morning outside the grounds of a, a guest house just outside Jerusalem with this man who has been the subject of a story that Jesus told. Good morning. Bonjour. Oh, I understand that, that Jesus was asked a question, who is my neighbour? And he told your terrible story. He's right. I was uh, walking from Jerusalem to Jericho and I was attacked. These terrible men. What did they do? They, uh, they did me up. I can see that. You were quite injured. Yes. The head, the head, the head was hurt and, and, and the arm that was uh, damaged, broken. I think, I think so. Now uh, what happened? <coughs> they, they came from nowhere and they uh, Hit me so terrible, I lost my conscious. You lost consciousness. I think so. Now what? I lay. They ran away with all of my money and some of my clothes. 
And then, what, what, did somebody rescue you? Well, I heard someone coming under the say Nothing. In fact, I just hear the footsteps. Oh, and they didn't stop. No, 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 they, they don't stop. Now what? A little later, I think I hear another. And he did not stop either. Oh dear. Uh, but but obviously somebody came. Yes, this 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 guy. I hear the steps of a donkey. A donkey came and saved you? No, no. He was with a guy I don't know. All oh, right. Uh, and did he stop? He saw me and he said, Are you all right? Are you okay? I say, Because that's all I could say. Ugh. Oh dear, you were really hurt. I was really hurt. He gave me a drink and then he took me on his donkey to this lovely guest house. Whoa, did you not have money to pay? No, no, he did. He did. He paid for you. Yes, he said, I come back and if you need no, I give. All right. Uh, and um, he didn't know him. No, he was uh, a, uh, how you say, Sanarian, Samaritan. Yes, yes, yes. He, 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 Samaritan, and he, he's very good. I, we don't usually talk to them. We change direction. We go in another way. All right. So, um, are you okay now? No, I still hurt on the arm, on the head. But he, he kind of saved your life. Yes, he did. And he is my neighbor. Very good. Thanks very much for telling us your story and now back to the studio. Thanks Trev, another brilliant interview once again from you. It's good to see the victim is recovering from his injuries. In other news, don't forget this Friday at 4pm is Ignite Kids Zoom. If you want to join in, just contact the studio for details. Also, it's Father's Day today, so before I hand over to our junior reporters, here is a special report from the field. That's it from me, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Happy Father's Day. We love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. We love you. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Hopefully, see you soon. Hey Dad, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Daddy! Hi Dad, happy Father's Day from your favourite son. Uh, we're missing not getting to hang out with you today, but I just want to say that we love you and hopefully we'll get to hang out very soon. Um, and I hope you have a great day. Happy Father's Day! <laughs> happy, happy Father's, Father's day. day! Thanks, Jen! It's Father's Day. You're right, it is Father's Day. But before we go and celebrate, should we pray? Yeah. Dear God, thank you for our dads and all those other men in our lives. Bless them today and keep them safe. Amen. Amen. Great prayer, Jacob. Thank so, you. what's next, Caleb? It's family time. What's family time? Where we learn about all the, where we learn about the story. Oh, okay. And the craft. And I like the craft. My parents are racing bit. Not racing bit. I'm the fastest! What? <laughs> no, I'm the fastest! Look! I want you to do the craft! Guys, come back! Thank you, Jen, and thank you to Robin, to Caleb and Jacob. If what you've heard this morning about Ghana has wet your appetite. If God has touched your heart, you can be involved uh, in a number of ways. You could write to us through our website, newlifeghana.co.uk, or you can give to the work, either in our child sponsorship program, or you can donate with the link that's coming on the screen right now. Please uh, respond to that if God has spoken to you this morning. If you'd like to give to the mission of New Life Baptist Church, again, the link will be on the screen right now for you to donate. If this morning you would like us to pray for you, there is a link coming up in which you can uh, email us and we will pray for you. Next week, we're starting a new exciting series. On the 28th of June, we're going to start a series of talks based on the Alpha Course, which takes us to the foundation of our Christian faith. 
during those talks, there'll be an opportunity for you to phone in uh, on our church mobile number, and that number will be given every week with any questions you might have. With, get your friends along, people maybe who don't come to church normally, and they can uh, phone in or they can text in with questions. And after the talk, there'll be an opportunity for a number of us to discuss and answer those questions as best we can. Thank you for being with us this morning. I'm now going to pray a blessing over us all. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you during this coming week. Have you ever asked, is there more to life than this? Do you know anyone who's asking, what's the point? Starting on the 28th of June, uh, we're starting a new series of talks on a Sunday morning. Each talk will explore a new topic from a Christian perspective. Starting to unpack the difficult questions and aiming to spark a conversation. If you want to ask any questions, you can text or phone them in during the service. And then after each talk, as part of the service, there's going to be a panel um, who's going to aim to sort of chat through some of the issues raised. And if you've never thought about life's big questions, or if you've struggled with them for years, if you've got no faith or have been a Christian for a long time, or perhaps you've just come to faith, this series is for you. Tell your friends and tell your family. Join us for our live stream services on Sunday mornings at 10.30 on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page.